Can everybody tell me what my resolution should be if I'm designing for the web? 72. 72, right? And what about if I was designing for print? High quality print. 300 DPI. Right, 300. And can anybody, quick revision, tell me when should I use RGB color as opposed to CMYK? Let's forget about the others for now. So for like the RGB color is for like for display on the screen, but I think for CMYK is when you print it. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. So to review last class, does anybody first of all have any questions on on anything that was in the last class? It's okay if you wasn't there, but for those that were there. Any questions? Anything was not put there? All right. So just to do a quick review. So let me get my tools in order. All right. So we're looking at the type tool today. Type tool also called the text tool, depending on who you're talking, All right? We call it the type tool. And if you look on the toolbar, right, it looks like you only have four options uh, horizontal type tool, vertical type tool, and vertical type mask tool, horizontal type mask tool. We're going to leave the type mask alone for, for today. And we're just going to look at the horizontal and vertical type tools, right? And they are various. So between the two of them, it's straightforward. The horizontal type tool will allow you to type a text horizontally, right? And the horizontal type tool is your standard tool. Let me, sorry, let me just change my font to something that you can actually see. So our standard text will be created with our horizontal type tool, right? And our vertical type tool will create our vertical text. So vertical text runs up to down. So vertical text. I'm gonna keep that around for a bit. I'm gonna split it up onto two lines. Vertical text. Everybody understand that that is straightforward enough, yeah? Can anybody that was here last week tell me, and I'm going to switch back to the horizontal type tool. Can anybody here in, that was any last class tell me um, the different ways that we can use the horizontal type tool? Give me one way. One type of text that we can create using the horizontal type tool. Um, a text box. Right, we can create a text box. So to create a text box, essentially with the type tool, if you notice over any blank area of the document, it will have a dotted box around the, in the that little eye is called the insertion point. So it'll have a, a dotted box around the insertion point indicating that if you click and drag, you will essentially create a text box. So you click and drag to whatever size that you need to create a box. And then when you release, what you will have is a text box that you can type text in. All right. And anybody tell me what is the advantage of a text box? No? Well, the major advantage of a text box is that it constrains text within its borders, right? So your text within the text box will always adjust itself to fit neatly within the borders of the box. 
if there is an overflow, what will happen is your text will start disappearing from the bottom end. Everybody see that? So your text box yes, sir. strains your text to its borders. All right. What is the second way that you can use the type tool? Reform. Reform text. And that is what exactly what I did with the um, my text here, horizontal type tool. Essentially, if you have the type tool selected, instead of clicking and dragging to create a box, you can do a single click and that will allow you to create Freeform text. And the difference between a text box and freeform text is that the freeform text is not constrained to any box. So if you keep typing in a straight line, your text is going to run straight across the screen, off your screen, until you press enter. To get you to the next line. All right, let me make one a little bit smaller so we can see. All right, so free from text is not constrained at all. You manually break up the text how you want, all right? Okay. We have two other ways that we can use our standard text tool. Um, can anybody tell me what they are? So what the shape, like you, you put any text in the shape, you clip it or something, and it's like it fit the words fit in the shape. What do we call it? I, I can't remember the specific name now. Anybody know it? Type within the path and type on the path. Right, type within the path. So um Let's first change the color of my shape so we can actually see what we're working with. Let's make it yellow. So the type within the path and the type on the path are similar but different. Both of them work with a path, right? Both of them use a path to essentially define their, their borders, their boundaries, and how they're going to work. However, the type within a path actually fits with, you know, on the inside of the path. And the type on a path follows the boundaries of the path. And you activate them based on where you place your cursor before you create the new text layer. And by creating a new text layer, what I mean is you click with the type tool. All right. If you notice, every time we click to create either a text box or freeform text or vertical text or any type of text, we actually create a new layer within the layers panel. All right. The type within a path is no different. So let's say we have a path, or in this case, we have a shape, and we use our type tool and put it directly over the shape. Notice if it's not over the shape, you have a square border around it, a square dotted border. If it's over the shape, you have a circular dotted border indicating that it's going to type within the shape. So again, a single click at this point will create a new text layer. Right? Type within shape. This is text. And again, it works similarly to a text box in that the shape actually constrains, sorry. The shape actually constrains the text to fit within it. All right? So, um, Trying to demonstrate that here. Right. So as you can see, if we increase the size of the text, it increases, but it fits within the shape. Right? Without overflowing. If there is any overflow, again, it begins to disappear from the bottom edge, right? So you begin to lose the bottom of your text. 
and that works with any shape, not just circles. All right. And then the last one, let me take off that circle here. I will create a new path. So, how have you guys been getting along with your pen tool? Anybody been practicing using it? And create an awkward shape that we can just use to demonstrate type on path. So again, we're going to change the color to something that will be a bit more visible. But our text will be visible over. This is a lighter yellow. All right. And to use the type on path, again, you start with the standard type tool. And you don't place your tech, your type tool over the path, but you go on the edge, right on the, the border of the path, right? Notice the cursor will change again to the insertion point of a little curly line through it, indicating that it's going to follow the path, right? A single click at this point creates your text on the path, right? If you notice the text follows the path around the entire perimeter. Now, this tool can be a little difficult because you have a few um, additional parts to it. It's not just the text, right? You actually have start points and stop points of the text. So it requires you to switch over to use a di the direct selection tool, right? Which you can then use to manipulate your text, meaning you can pull, you can adjust the starting point and the stop point of your text. So you can adjust how exactly it follows the shape. So you can decide if it starts at one point, it stops at another point. <coughs> and you can also decide if it follows the shape. Sorry about that. On the outside or on the inside. So I can put it to the outside of the shape, or I can put it on the inside of the shape, depending on how I want it to be placed. And let me just it up here and that's why nice. we have a sharp curve there so the text is kind of unreadable but you guys just have to learn to work with that so that is the type on top that say it follows path All right. Tell me if everybody understands the type tool so far and the four different ways that we can use it. We can type on a path, we can type within a path, we can create a text box, or we can create freeform text. Everybody get that, right? But those are what not there in the last class. Let me know if you guys get that. Any questions? Okay. I'm guessing we all good, yeah? All right. So let's move on. So we have a number of type layers here, right? Representing our different types of text. Let's, let's delete that shape so we have these type layers. Let's make them invisible for now. All right, so let's work with the text box. And the next thing we're going to look at uh, your type panels, right? Again, as I mentioned in the last class, you have three main type panels within Photoshop. And they are your character. Sorry, let me just pull them up for you to see. So 
sorry, I think I have to turn it. My Photoshop is falling a little slowly here. I'm doing all at once. Let's take the layers a little less important for now. All right, so our three um, type panels are our character panel, our paragraph panel, and our glyphs. If you do not see them on your screen, everybody knows how to access them. Go to window. Right, and you have character, you have glyphs, and you have paragraph. Essentially, clicking on them would make them visible on your screen. Everybody got that? I'm assuming yes, right? If I don't hear you guys, yes, all right. Let us go through them in detail, starting with the character panel. And as the character panel implies, the, the um, options that you have here relate to the individual characters within your text, right? Or within your text layer. And as I showed in the last class, you could actually employ um, any of the formatting. You can apply it to the entire text layer, or you can apply it to selected sections of your text, right? So again, an obvious option here in the character panel is the color. Everybody see the color box right here? It currently shows my red text, my text. If I want to change the color of my text using the character panel, I could simply ensure that I have the right layer selected. I must have the proper layer selected, otherwise the, the effect will be applied somewhere else, right? Then I simply click on the color box change the select a different color and notice the color changes dynamically on my document right so let's make that text blue for now but what if i don't want all of my text blue i wanted some one color some another color in that case what you actually do is you make a selection and the, the um, modifications that you make within the character panel will be applied only to your selection so let's make that selection red so again, we click in the color, um, the color part of the character panel with our text selected. So just to illustrate, I first have my text selected. Within its border. Click on the color. And let's make that back red. When you're done with any change, you need to confirm especially if you have, you will edit text. So click up there to confirm. That should be standard for you already. You have to do that every time you, you resize or, or rotate um, your, any layer actually. Right, we can take it a step further. Let's change the color of the middle line. This time let's make it yellow. So click in there and Something like the bright line here. Let's go for orange. Okay. Confirm. All right. So by making a selection, we can apply any of the options in the character panel to individual characters within your text layer. Now let's see what all of the options we have are. All right. The first one, everybody, well, let's look at this really is really the first one. That first um, text box gives you the option to select your font face or your font type, actually what your font is, what your font looks like. All right. So it's simply a matter of clicking and finding a font that you like. Now, one of the things that graphic designers like is to collect cool fonts, right? Um, so I have a collection of over 3,500 fonts that's been collected over years. 
So quite a bit of funds to go with it. And they do come in handy. And your collection will be growing constantly. Probably every new job will require something. So you add to it. So like all you mean you collect them like from an external site or something? Yeah, you can um you can get you can find fonts online and download. One of the resources that I use for fonts is a website called DA Font. But if you just do a Google search for fonts, um, free fonts, you will find quite a number of websites where you can download free fonts. Now, because you can download free fonts, that doesn't mean fonts are free, right? Usually there's a price tag associated with it. So you can compensate the artists who do work hard putting them together, right? And um, of course, if you're using any of the fonts for professional work, um, it's best that you pay for it. For one, you will get the full font. And when I say the full font, I mean you will get the font with all of its characters. A lot of times when you download free fonts, what you get are sample fonts. So you may find they may have the characters from A to Z, but they may not have numbers or they may not have commas or full stops or, or that sort of thing, right? So if you want to get full fonts with all of the features, you want to purchase them, but there are a number of free fonts available online, right? Fonts come in different formats, but we're not really talking about fonts today. If anybody has issues getting fonts and installing fonts, let me know. But that is a discussion for another class. All right. Okay. So we're going to use Batlines fonts for our edits today. Let's make the text a little bigger, right? But actually, before we do that, so we selected a font, back lines. The next text box we have gives you your font options, right? And again, different fonts have different options. And Currently, the font I'm using bat lines has not too many options. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it. And the easy way you can duplicate any layer within Photoshop is by, if you have your move tool selected, press and hold the Alt key, right? Notice my arrow now has two heads and I can click and drag on the layer and I have a duplicate of it, all right? Let me show you an example of one of my favorite fonts that has quite a number of options. So. So Helvetica New is um, one of the fonts that I use a lot. And the main reason why I use it a lot is because there are a ton of options. So it starts from the ultra light, which is ultra light. You can barely see it, right? And then it moves up to thin, Right, which is a little bit thicker. You have light, you have Roman, you have medium, you have bold, you have heavy. And notice we're using a text box. So as the text is getting thick and heavier, it's actually, um, it's actually overflowing and disappearing from the bottom edge, right? But let's continue. Heavy, we have black, right? And um, well, black is the heaviest one there, but in some fonts you also have extra black. So quite a number of options for you to work with and the italic versions of all of them, all right? <clears throat> but again, as I mentioned, not all fonts will have all of those options. Some fonts will have no options at all. You just, what you see is what you get, okay? Keep that around for now and continue with our battle line. If we wanted to increase the size of the text, meaning to increase our font size, we come to the second line now, right? And we see a big T, a small T here, and 48 point currently is our font size. Now you can adjust your font size by simply clicking the down arrow here and selecting a bigger font size, right? Alternatively, you can click and drag, right? So click on the label and drag to dynamically increase or decrease your font size, right? So it actually shows you what happens as you're doing it. Now, it will turn out smoother if you've made a selection, right? 
So again, let me demonstrate that. If I make a selection, I can increase or decrease my phone size. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can do it selectively. So you can select any text that you want and make it bigger or smaller. You do not have to make all of your text bigger at one time, right? You can make some text big, let's put it up to your eye. Right, and you can make some text small. All right. Yep. Okay, so font size is pretty straightforward. Now, an interesting thing to note about the character panel is notice right now, I'm not seeing any value in here. And that's because the layer that I'm currently on has multiple values. Some texts are small, some texts are big, some texts are medium. So it doesn't really know what to show me. What I could do is if I wanted to see the size of any particular text within that layer, I could then make a selection. So this text here is 102 points. This text here is 50 points. So it shows you based on your selection. If you've selected um, text that has multiple sizes, so a big one and a small one, again, the character panel will not show you any size because you have multiple sizes. But you can make both of them a uniform size by selecting one. Okay. Um, the person of the four crying yeah, in the background. Could you please move away, please? It's okay. I just muted it. <clears throat> All right. So. That is our font size. Can anybody tell me what is that next one? Next to font size, to the right of font size? So the space in between the lines, the space in between the sentence lines. Uh, <laughs> the space in between the lines. Okay, look at that. It's, this one is called the leading, right? I'm going to go down all the way to the last one at the bottom here. And look at this. This one is called the baseline shift. Now, they seem to do the same thing, but they're a little bit different. The, the leading adjusts the space between the line, right? And the baseline shift adjusts where the base of the text is. So let's look at them individually. So currently, my setting for the space between the lines is auto, meaning it's using the default font size for whatever, sorry, the default leading size for whatever font size that I have, right? If I increase my font size, the leading will automatically increase. If I decrease it, it will decrease as well. However, if, I, if I'm not happy with that size or really that ratio of the size to, uh, of the text versus the space in between the text, I can adjust it. I can make this space between the text much smaller, right? So that my text essentially runs over itself or I can increase it and make it much larger so that there is more space in between my lines. I'm doing it a little bit slower now, just using the arrow keys on my keyboard. So I can increase the space within my lines. I can also do it for any particular line. So I can make this line a lot closer to the line above it. And I can make this line a lot further from the line above it. Now, the text, the other text in the line will affect how your, how your line, your leading or your line height is adjusted. So you want to consider that as well, all right? For instance, if, All right. So, okay. If you have multiple text sizes on a single line, right? 
what will happen, especially if you have it set to auto, is the text will fit based on the largest text in the line. Okay, so essentially the line height will be based on the largest text. If you remove the large text, the line height will automatically adjust itself to be based on the smaller text. Everybody see that? That's just a note there for you. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Sorry, let me just take a look at the guess. All right. Now we have here the directly below your text size, your kerning, and the kerning basically are just the space between two characters, right? No, not not this. Space between the two characters, but how the characters relate to each other, um, meaning the space between them, right? How they relate to each other in terms of giving each other space. So, you know, some characters, for instance, the, the R has a straight line, right? So, you know exactly where it starts and it stops. Other characters, like, um, let's see if I put a capital A, right? Okay, not, maybe not in that font, but. Uh, or a T, for instance. Sorry, that font is a bad one to demonstrate. But um, let's use that. Let's use the vertical. So an A, for instance, you have less space at the bottom because the A opens up at the bottom and more space at the top, right? So you can actually adjust how the text deals with the space in between. Most times, um, you, you really just want to use zero, which is the default setting, or you want to use one of the two default options. You can configure it for metrics, meaning it will use a set measurement to measure the space between the two characters, or you can set it for optical, meaning it will adjust the characters for what looks best and not necessarily what measures best, okay? But essentially what it really does is adjust your, the space between your characters, all right? Show you this option to save it right now. Okay. All right, let's get back to our main text. All right, this one is straightforward, all right? Below your leading, you have the tracking, and essentially tracking is the space between the characters. So, let me make my text box a little bigger. All right. So, if I wanted to put more space, and again, that doesn't relate to the, the characters on the edges, right? That's just the space between character A and character B. So, if I want.